Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today is part two of my whole months series, part two of two, where I teach you how to calculate a whole month instead of just part of a month. Now, yesterday in part one, we learned how to do it just in a query with a calculated field, and that'll also work in a form or a report, but it's a little bit cumbersome if you want to use it in multiple places. So today in part two is the developer portion. Wait, let me, let me change this. Hold on, let me get up here. We'll take this and we'll right click and we'll bring it to front there. Okay, all right, that looks better. Okay, all right, this is the developer one. So today we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna make a custom VBA function out of it. Now, before we get started, if you don't know how to program in VBA and you wanna learn, don't be scared, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. You'll need to know how to write an if then statement, which is basically like the if function that we learned about in part one, right? Pretty, pretty, you know, it's the same thing pretty much. And finally, you'll need to know how to create your own custom function. Go watch this video. I'll show you how to do that. These are all again, free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them and then come on back. All right, here we are back in the video from yesterday. And like I mentioned yesterday, this is, I mean, it works, but it's a little bit cumbersome, right? It's just, if I wanna do this in multiple places on my database, a couple different queries, maybe a form or two, it's just, you gotta remember all this. It'd be nice to make a function that's just called whole months. All right, so I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna use this as a template, all right, to make a custom function. So I'm gonna hit okay here. Let's close this guy down, save changes, sure. Let's go to a global module out here. Global modules, this way everybody in the database can use it. We're not limited to just a single form or a report. All right, I have a global module. If you don't have one, click on create and then module over here. Don't click on class module, that's a whole different beast. And then I already have one, so I'm gonna just open this guy up. And then here comes my VBA editor, there it is. I'm gonna get rid of some stuff here and make it a little bit smaller. Okay, let's come down to the bottom, whatever you got going on in there. Now I'm just gonna paste in that thing that I brought in from the query. I'm gonna put a comment in front of it like that so the compiler ignores it. But we can look at this and use this as kind of like a template of what we're gonna do. Okay, all right, so we need a public function. Public means the whole database can use it again. We're gonna call it whole months. And it's gonna take two parameters in, start date as a date and end date as a date. And the function itself is gonna return a number of whole months. So we're thinking whole numbers, I'm thinking long integers, right? As a long. Okay, now. Just like this, it's gonna start off with the date diff. So I can just copy it right from there, copy. And I'm gonna come down here and say whole months, that's the name of my function, the value I'm returning equals that to start with, okay? All right, we're good. So we got the number of whole months there with just the month. Now I gotta subtract that extra one here. Now, what does this say if you read it out loud? It basically says if the day of end date is less than the day of start date, then my value that I need is a one, otherwise the value that I need is a zero. Now you can ignore the zero and just say, if the day of end date is less than the day of start date, set whole months equal to whole months minus one. All right, and that's a whole lot easier to write, I think. So if the day of end date is less than the day of start date, then whole months equals whole months minus one. Now, I tend to try to type all in caps, although I see I capitalized that D there, but that's okay. Because I like to, I like to make sure I don't capitalize anything, because when I hit enter, the compiler fixes them for me, or the VBA editor fixes it for me. See, it camel cases everything, E, D, S, D. And that way I can just visually look and make sure it understands and knows what all these values are. All right, whole months obviously is the name of the function. These are functions, start date is a parameter, end date's a parameter, and it does this because I got option explicit set there, so I have to declare all of these things. If I just type in here something and I made a mistake, right, whole months equals whole month plus one. If I press enter, notice that second whole month didn't capitalize itself because the compiler has no idea what this is, the VBA editor, oops, someone's beaming in. All right, so that's just one of those little tricks, okay? So that's it, there's, there's your function, that's all you gotta do. Now we can test it right here if you want to by using the immediate window. All right, view and then immediate. And you can use the immediate window to basically call these functions. So I'm gonna go question mark, 
whole months and just give it a couple dates. If you're going to give it actual dates, make sure you put them inside these things, the hashtags, right? So let's go uh, one, two. And if you don't specify a year, it'll just use the current year, comma, let's go two, three. And enter. And that's a one. Okay, that's good. All right, what if I say 124? Come back here on the end of the line, press enter again, and it's a zero. Hey, look at that. Working good. All right, so the, so the function works, pretty sure. Let's close this, save it, debug compile once in a while. Make sure you don't have any compiler errors anywhere else. All right, we can close the VBA editor. Now we can go into our query or anywhere in the database if you want to. Whoops, not this guy. Let's go back into that query we made before. The date queue. Design view. And now instead of that whole thing, okay, we can actually use the whole month's function. I'm going to rename this to WM just so we don't have any naming conflicts. Okay. And I'm going to make the new one. I'm going to zoom in again, Shift F2. I'm going to make the new one WM2 whole months two with the function. And this will be whole months between start date and end date. See how much easier that is to just be able to say, give me whole months instead of having to know that whole formula, right? Hit okay, run it, and there you go. It should get the same result as the previous one. And you can use that anywhere else in your database that you want. You can use it uh, like you use it right in a form. All right, let's say you want to know the number of whole months since this customer sense field. All right, I'm just going to let me I'm just going to repurpose credit limit here. Let's just get rid of credit limit. I'll call this months. And instead of credit limit, we'll come in here. I'm going to name this whole months. I'll just call it whole M because again, I don't want a naming conflict. And this will be equal to the whole months. See how it comes up in my IntelliSense now because it's a global function, right? Start date will do customer sense, which is a field, comma, and then we'll do today's date as the end date. So that's the whole months since the customer sense. How many whole months have they been a customer? Here, I'll zoom in so you can see that better. All right, equals my whole months function from customer sense, which is a field, to today's date, all right? And I like to make these gray if they're calculated fields, just like this guy here. Something the user can't edit, I like to make gray, just like that. Come here. Okay. Save it, close it, close it, open it, boom. Oh, and it's still formatted as currency. <laughs> Let's change that too. All right, that's an easy fix. Format, get rid of currency. Boom, goodbye. All right, one more time. Save it, save it, close it, open it, boom. 831 months. Let's put a date in there that makes more sense. Let's go with, uh, let's see, today is... February 12th, 2025, I'll just put two one in there and that's zero months, zero whole months, right? What if I go one one? That's one whole month. How about 2024, uh, six one? And that's eight months, is that right? Yep, that's right. Because January would have been, yeah, yeah, December, December would have been 12 months. January 1st is, I'm sorry, six months. <laughs> January 1st is seven months. February 1st would have been eight months. And today is February 12th, so it's eight whole months. So it looks like it's working. And you can put future dates in here if you want to as well. If I put 2027 in there, I'll just give you a negative number. It's 28 months to go, right? All right, couple more things before I let you go. If you're a gold member, you'll find the whole months in the code vault. It's right there. You just hit the copy button and you can paste it into your thing. If you want to learn more about dates and times and all those related functions, I start covering them in my comprehensive guide to access functions, starting with the date time functions, part one, where I, I literally go through all the different date time functions that there are. We figure out things like, you know, inside of the range, outside of date range, uh, you name it. If it has to deal with dates, I cover it in 27. I think 28 is part two, date add, date diff, date part, date serial, ordinals, first, second, third calculating an exact age, that kind of stuff. What's in 29, what do we got? All right, then we go into aggregate functions and other stuff. So it's two parts of just date functions, 27, 28. So if you work with dates a lot, this is for you. And I also have this thing called the date time seminar, which is all that plus a whole lot more, all right? We cover all kinds of stuff, calculating the number of work days between two dates, just like the Excel network days function. Right, creating reminder pop-ups, a holiday exclusion table. So if you want to put in there what days you guys aren't working, you can add that figure into your calculations. Recurring appointments, 
Uh, you name it. Again, it's all in here. It's like ragu. Is it, was it, which one is that? Ragu or prego? I think it's prego. It's in there, right? It's got mushrooms, parsley. It's in there. So this is all lots and lots of daytime stuff. All right, so check it out. All right, did you have some fun? Did you learn something? Post some comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button. And if you're not subscribed, they're already subscribed. That is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I will see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And Amanda Nicole Consulting, specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an Access database. You'll find links to the Diamond Sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, $1. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, 
and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members, Get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.